friend, my name is Danny Walker. Welcome to this episode dedicated to the JKN Miss Universe Extravaganza. If you enjoy content like this, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you know when new episodes come out. And if you want other ways to support the channel, you can click that super thanks button or of course share this episode with a friend. That is a huge help for the channel. It's something I greatly appreciate. And as my free gift to you, please check out the description below where I have shared a link to my free pageant prep course if you are preparing for your next competition. Since there's a new owner at Miss Universe, there are a lot of changes and this is the first change that I'm very excited to see. In addition to holding a press conference, there was also a Miss Universe extravaganza that was held in Thailand. And the best part of this for me is that they brought back a lot of returning contestants, title holders, and those in leadership. There were two Thai hosts for this event who were translating a lot of what was being said into Thai, while some of the guests that attended spoke strictly in Thai, so I don't have translations for that, but I'll share with you what I know and what I learned from this event. First to grace the stage was Amy Emmerich, who is the CEO of Miss Universe. There was Paula Shugart, as many of you know, she is the president of Miss Universe. And then we had the reigning Miss Universe, Harnaz, of course. And then also we had some former Miss Universe title holders enter the stage. They were Catriona Gray, Miss Universe 2018. We had Andrea Mesa, Miss Universe 2020. There was Layla, Miss Universe 2011. Natalie, Miss Universe Universe 2005 and then of course we had the new owner of Miss Universe Anne. The first thing that I learned is that there will be an audience vote this year so if you have a favorite contestant do not forget to vote. I'm sure that there'll be more information coming out about that later. I would assume that the voting would be done through the Miss Universe app or on the website so stay tuned for that. One thing that I personally loved is that everybody really dressed up for this event. It was fun to see a lot of the attendees in gowns. And I have to say, oh my gosh, the new owner was like, I'm sorry, she was like Miss Universe who? Look at this gown that she was wearing. I don't know who designed it. I don't have information about it, but I thought it was stunning. I loved it. I was just like, the fashion. Honestly, I really, really hope, I've talked about this in recaps, that the hosts will be very, very well dressed. Not only the contestants, because I feel like when the hosts are very well dressed for an event, that it really speaks to the quality of the organization. So just seeing how Anne was dressed for this extravaganza, I mean, granted, she's a billionaire, but I hope that that's gonna also come to the Miss Universe stage this year. Let's talk a little bit more about what was said on stage. Many of you have asked in my episodes, why did they change the motto from confidently beautiful to beautifully confident? I shared with you that during my year, we were invited to the Miss Universe offices and Paula Shugart shared with us, even in 2018, that she wishes that the motto had been originally beautifully confident. And she goes into more depth here at this extravaganza. So I'm gonna give you a recap essentially of what she said. She said, we flipped it to understand what the possibilities are in you. There's nothing more beautiful than that and it's in every single person, not just the women on stage. It makes a more beautiful person and a happier person. So essentially seeing the possibilities for your own life, seeing your full potential and living out that potential. Amy was asked how she sees the future of Miss Universe and here's what she had to say. It's about the community. Look at this, look at these loyal fans. Finding more ways to share the love is definitely in the future. Okay, that really excites me. She says, it's more than one night, it's 365 days. Now, I agree with her on that, but I think that a shortcoming of the organization in recent years has been that we're only really, really pushing Miss Universe during her press and media week. That's when you hear about her in the US, at least. And then after that, she disappears until she crowns the next title holder. So I'm really hoping that this isn't just words, that actions are gonna come from this. And then she said, it's the stories of these women that we need to share every day. You'll see that more on the platform and on the stage. And then she talked about including commerce, the platform itself, the products that will be coming out and shows. So. I 
really, really hope that we're going to see some positive changes for Miss Universe in coming years. I believe that's possible. Harnaz was asked how the Miss Universe title has changed her. She said it's changed her from being the girl next door to becoming the woman of her life. She's lived up to the words, believe in yourself, speak for yourself, and to be beautifully confident. Natalie, Miss Universe 2005, she was asked about being crowned in Thailand and why she decided to live there. If you don't know that, yes, she still lives in Thailand. She said, I still remember arriving when I competed and I remember the beauty. I couldn't leave that after being welcomed. I had to come back after my year in New York and I have been here for 17 years. I'm still here. And in Thailand, there's so many resources, people, products, etc. She said, let's stand together and show the world what Thailand is all about. I think it was brilliant to have her here. Obviously her living in Thailand, that makes a lot of sense, but she is going to be a great spokesperson in my eyes for, you know, a continued spokesperson of Miss Universe, but also just for Thailand. Next, Miss Universe 2011 at Layla was asked a few questions. They wanted to know, as Miss Universe, can you tell us your opinion of some of the benefits of the international competition? And she says, I'm from Angola. Before I won Miss Universe Angola, Angola was known for being a country in war, for destruction and corruption. Everyone knew my country for bad things. The Miss Universe platform gave me the platform to show my country in a different light. I'm very proud of being Angolan. When I see the younger generation of Angolan young women being proud of what I achieved, it makes me more proud to be a Miss Universe. Just makes me emotional. That is so, so sweet. Then she talked about being the first former Miss Universe who is also the national director of Miss Universe Angola. And I didn't know about that, but apparently this is her first year. So it's probably why I haven't heard about that. They asked her why she took that opportunity. And she said, because I believe that I'm qualified. I'm the only Angolan who's won Miss Universe. I went to school for international relationships. I understand about leadership. I believe I can give these younger women an opportunity to use their voices to fight for causes they believe in. The reason I joined Miss Universe was because I wanted to represent my country on an international stage. I wanted the world to get to know Angola in a different light. I want to give these girls the same opportunity. Our main focus is social work. We are giving back to the community in a bigger way. We've raised funds to better the lives of Angolan children. And then she talked about how they recently raised funds for a school. In the past, children were walking 13 kilometers to school every day. And she said that being this national director has given her a position of power to change lives in her society. Wow, the work never stops for a Miss Universe. Next, it was time to catch up with Andrea Mesa, Miss Universe 2020. And I have to say, I loved her gown. I loved it. Oh my gosh, the metallic fabric, the corseted waist, her makeup was incredible, the hair, all of it. I was just such a fan of this look, just saying. Then they said, what have you been up to? And she said, I've been busy. Through the Miss Universe organization, I was able to get a contract with El Mundo. I love my job. I'm very happy. I was able to host red carpets for the Latin American Music Awards, the Latin American Billboard Awards. I still work with Smile Train, which is a charitable partner of the Miss Universe organization. And I've been trying to still be in contact with them, working with them on fundraising. She's gonna work with them on a new project very soon. And she says, but it's thanks to the Miss Universe organization that I am here. I had a dream and I wanted to be like the girls on TV. They inspired me and now I am next to them. It's amazing. Ah, okay, how inspiring is that to say that you we're watching these women and now you're standing beside them on stage. That is remarkable. Then they talked to Catriona and they were asking her about being back in Thailand and what that's like. She said that it goes without question that this place has a special place in her heart. But she also mentioned that when she was 18 years old that she lived in Bangkok for about three months and that even though she was a quote unquote nobody at the time, that she was always treated with kindness. And then she said that the love of Thailand is not conditional and that's always stayed with her. And so she said, thank you, Thailand. And then they asked her about her singing career and she shared a little bit about that. She sang a little bit. Honestly, I would love to see her sing for a Miss Universe competition. I love when they use the talent of former title holders or contestants and incorporate that into the show. I think that would be so beautiful.
Anne essentially reiterated what she had said at the press conferences, and I talked about that in another episode, but just to recap, she said, we are looking for transformational leadership, turn your pain into power, and turn that power into transformational leadership. Now, she also spoke in Thai, so I can't translate that. If you know more about what she said, or if, this, if it was just a translation in Thai, then please feel free to share that in the comments. What are you thinking so far? Comment queen if you're excited about this extravaganza. Angela Ponce also was there at the extravaganza. And remember, she was the first transgender contestant to compete at Miss Universe and she represented Spain. And they asked her, how does it feel to be back? Now, most of what she said was in Spanish. So my Spanish, we're, we're getting a little bit better, but essentially she said that she was happy to be there with her Miss Universe family. She talked about representation and this being such a special moment to be back. Then Anne came on stage with her and had a couple words. Now, Anne was a little bit soft-spoken and not really facing the mic, so I couldn't quite hear everything that she said, but she said that I would love to empower other trans women because we encourage you to have empowerment and to speak for yourself. Then they asked her, are you looking then for a transgender Miss Universe or a mother Miss Universe because the rules have changed? And she says, I'm not in a position to be looking for a trans woman to be crowned, but if they can make it, then so be it, essentially. Then she talked about the rules one more time. She talked about married women can compete as well as divorced women. And then she said that as long as they're under the age of 27 or no older than 27. And then she said, Angela is a great example of gender equality. And that's why she is on stage today. Then after this, I thought this was great. They brought a bunch of former and the current Miss Universe Thailand on stage to address the audience. They asked them some questions. They mainly spoke in Thai, so I was not able to translate that. But the one queen that did speak in English was Anjali, and she was Miss Universe Thailand 2021. And she says that she's seen changes in more acceptance of diversity and differences, that since starting her campaign as Miss Universe Thailand, that she's seen that people have shifted the value value of women to something that's not just about outer beauty, but genuine inner beauty and seeing what the capabilities are beyond how we look like from the outside, which is something I'm extremely proud of. And I hope to continue to see that. And I'm sure we will see it in the next years of Miss Universe. And after that, after all the Thai queens spoke, then the former Miss Universes came back on stage and came back on stage. And then they did a giveaway. It was like a gift bag giveaway for the people in the audience. I thought that was really neat. And then also they brought on a singer to wrap things up. There was confetti, there was dancing, and everybody was just having a great time. So I thought this was a fantastic event. I'm really, really excited to see more things like this. I I really think that there's so much potential for this new leadership to make the pageant even better than it's been in the past decade. I'm very excited about it. I'm very hopeful about it. They also talked a little bit about Miss Universe being in Louisiana. Don't forget about that. January 14th, I am trying to attend with some of my Miss USA sisters. Of course, if I can attend that, then I will be vlogging and sharing with you behind the scenes. And thank you so much for watching this episode. I greatly appreciate it. Please share it with a friend. It is so helpful on YouTube if you do that to help the channel to continue to grow and I greatly appreciate that support. Of course, if you wanna see my other recent Miss Universe episodes, check out these ones. I will link right up here in the corner for you. And if there's anything else that you wanna see on the channel, let me know, comment that down below in the comments. I appreciate that and I look forward to seeing you next time.